would like it, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Acts chapter 16. Mm. <laughs> like all things in the world that uh, COVID-19 has put to a pause, it has also put a pause to our Galatians series. Uh, we're we're going to just be jumping off just for a week. If you've been visiting the church for the last couple of weeks, we've been going through the book of Galatians and just each chapter picking it apart and learning something from it. But this week, I just wanted to do something a bit different just because of the situation that we are in. Um, who here has already started to search up what you're going to be doing during self-isolation? For me, I'm like, I worry about these things. Not so much about getting sick. I don't really care about that. I'm worried about what am I going to do when I'm spending 10 hours in my house each day? Usually, we leave the ministry, our house, probably around 8.30. We usually don't get home until about 9.30, 8.30, 9 o'clock. And so most of my day, I'm spent outside. And I'm scared thinking, what the heck am I going to do when I go home? Because in the beginning, it's kind of like a romantic idea. It's like, in the beginning, I'm thinking, yeah, it's going to be cool for like one day. It's going to be fun. You watch like a movie or two. But I'm that person that if I don't have something active to do, I'm going to start banging my head on the wall. Like, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. But then there's some other people who are really looking forward to it. They're like, they're thinking to themselves, this is perfect. I needed to catch up on my uni work anyways. You know? This, this is perfect. I got some dishes to do. I haven't done my laundry in about a week. So this, this couldn't come at a better time. Some of us are thinking that way. Because when we think that way, we realize that sometimes there are things we will only do when we are locked up and have no other choice. Right? When's the last time you really went through your closet and seen all the clothes that you need and don't need? Well, you're about to have that in a couple weeks from now. But I, I think God does this to us sometimes is that he limits our choices to get us to do what we really need to do. Sure. It's kind of like when you're paying attention, you're trying to pay attention to a conversation, but you're also watching TV at the same time. Yeah. You know, what does that person do? Pick up the controller, turn it off, pay attention to me. It's the same thing every time, uh, whenever we're having like a conversation and uh, Tegan's right next to me and I'm usually fiddling with something, you know, I'll be like salt and pepper, kind of playing with them or something, and then Tegan always takes it away from me. I'm like, okay, I gotta focus. Right? That, that's kind of what God does in our life sometimes. He actually did this in the Old Testament, Exodus 3, 9 through 10. So I did send out this lesson by email as well if you want to follow along with that. But Exodus 3, 9 through 10 just quickly says, Now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians have, are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. It wasn't until God had taken the Israelites and exiled them and made them slaves to the Egyptians that they really started to focus on their relationship with God. Before they were crying out, they weren't praising his name, but it was when they were exiled, they couldn't focus on anything else other than, well, hey, i got to start praying to get me out of this situation. You know, it's funny, some people will say, hey, I don't have time to do Bible studies or, or read the Bible. Well, that's all about to change. Yeah. <laughs> We're all about to have a lot of time on our hands if the, the situation continues. Yeah. See, before the Exodus, the Jews here in Egypt, um, you know, they, they had no reason to really cry out. They had all this other time to focus on their blessings and everything else. But God said, hey, I'm going to take all that away from you so you can focus on me. See, God does this sometimes to get our attention. We have to be asking ourselves in this situation, with, you know, universities maybe canceling, uh, jobs you might start have to be working at home, and something that we've never faced in our generation, ever, I believe, is God trying to get your attention. Sometimes he gets us to do less so that we can do more. It's kind of like some of us in our lives, we've been doing a lot of things, but at the same time, we're not really doing anything. Yeah. It's kind of like the man who takes all his time stacking up boxes just to stack them down and stack them up another place. Yes, he's doing something. At the end of the day, nothing really happened, though. It's kind of the same how people are stacking up their boxes here in this world, yet they're all going to get teared down and they're investing in this world. Yet, when they die, have they really invested anything in heaven? 
And so God's like, hey, you're doing a lot of things, but you're not really doing anything. You're not going to see anything from the work that you're doing here. So now we have this opportunity where God is planning and getting us to start doing less. So preparing us to begin to start doing something more here. Yeah. Today we're going to be looking at three times the Apostle Paul was under confinement. And how God used him still in powerful ways. Paul was first confined in the prison of uh, Philippi. Then he was confined in the prison of Caesarea. And then in house arrest before his trial in Rome. And we're going to be kind of looking at each one of these situations. And how did God still use Paul? My title for my lesson this morning is Conquering Quarantine. Wow. Point number one, pray like no other. Acts chapter 16, verse 22 through 34. Acts 16, 22 through 34. We're reading the first time where Paul had to face confinement. It says, The crowds joined an attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailers were commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet to the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that, that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailers woke up, and when they saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. During that time, if, if, if a prisoner escaped that you were watching over, they would say, a life for a life. That because you let that life go, now we're going to take your life. So that's why he's right there about to kill himself. But here in verse 28, Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your whole household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately him, he and his whole household were baptized. The jailer brought them to his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. You know, when we read this story and kind of compare it to the example of the Israelites we previously mentioned today, you know, it's a little bit different now. Because in the previous example, God exiled them because they started to walk away from God. The exiles of Israel, they were doing something bad. God's like, okay, I need your focus. Let's get it on here. Let's, 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 let's go for it. You're going to take everything away from me so you can focus on me. But this one's a little bit different. Because Paul nor Silas were doing anything wrong. They were actually out there preaching God's word. Yeah. And yet, God still got them locked up. Sometimes we can think so limitedly, or limited, thinking that only bad things happen when God's trying to discipline us. Not realizing that it's just the cost for his next miracle. Wow. Come on. See, Paul and Silas, when, they, when that happened, they didn't go, God, why, why is this happening to us? You know, we, we've been doing your good work. We're focused on your will. You don't have to confine us. They didn't waste time whining about their situation or tending to their wounds. They prayed. They're like, this is the perfect time for me just to get focused on God right here. See, sometimes bad things happen to you or you go through difficult times. And it's nothing about you. No benefit of yours. Has nothing to do with you. Sometimes we think every situation is for us to learn something. It's not always about you guys. Paul's eyes, I'm assuming they had great prayer life, or else they wouldn't have turned to prayer at this time. This wasn't helping them pray more or praise more. They were already doing that. But it was just to help someone else. Sometimes bad things happen to you, not for you to learn, but for somebody else to learn. Yeah. That you take up the cost for someone else's blessing. Yeah. And that's what they were focused on. It wasn't just about them. 
See, this happens. And you're able to let this happen when you just get down and pray and praise, no matter the situation. See, whatever situation that we're going to face in the next couple of weeks, I want to really challenge us. Don't just sit there and do nothing. Pray something. Pray about something. Paul and Silas, they were beaten, flogged, thrown into prison, confined, held captive, and fastened to one spot. Yet, that did not really restrict them. Did it, it, did it stop them from impacting somebody else? No. See, sometimes we think that, that we're limited to our reach, but actually we're just limited to our speech. You think that things are not going to, just because you stop going out there and doing things, and doing the actions and speaking to people, that miracles will stop happening? No, it, it, it's not about you going and doing it. Miracles will stop happening when you stop talking to God. And that's what we can learn about this situation. I think right now, we have the chance to do more than we ever could being locked up than we ever could being out. We actually have that opportunity to not get focused on, get all those distractions of work and all the, the social requirements we have out there just to focus on God. We have the opportunity to do more than we ever could in the church right now. How much of a miracle would that be and really show us the power of prayer if we grow as a church more than we ever have in these next couple of months? Wow. Showing us the real power of prayer. But the main thing is, do you believe it? Yeah. You know, there's sayings when, when praise, praises go up, blessings come down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See? Coming up now, guys, uh, we may not be able to get that much toilet paper or hand sanitizer, but we will have plenty of time. Yeah. And with all this time, we have to ask ourselves, what are you going to do? Yeah. And I want to carefully recommend that God is sometimes like a loving wife. Sometimes we schedule, as husbands, we like to schedule things to do in time and, and to get with our wife. Not realizing that talking is an activity. <laughs> we don't understand that. We're like, hey, what are we going to do, right? we got to go here, go there. Like, no, we're doing something right now. We're just sitting on the couch. This is an activity, you know? <laughs> we have to realize God is a little like that. Okay, we're not going to be doing all the crazy things and everything God's calling us. But God understands that talking to him is an activity. It is time for us just to get down and talk to God. Really get open in your life. See, here in Matthew 6, 6, it says, When you pray, go into your room, close your doors, wash your hands, put on your mask. No, I'm just uh, But close your doors and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. We have here just an example that Paul and Silas were able to still get to the miracles even though they were in line because of their prayer life. But what I really like about their example as well is I like how Paul and Silas didn't just find their own corner to pray, right? They didn't, okay, you get in that corner, I'll pray in this corner. No, that this scripture shows a unity, yeah. a loving support that they had in prayer. And I'm so very grateful, actually, to be part of a fellowship that lives this example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow as a movement, if, if those who have not yet received that email, uh, we're going to fast and pray for the people that God has put in authority over us. Um, uh, an email got sent out to every member. Hopefully, you guys received that as well. If not, I can forward that to you. But every member in the world in our church to have a day of praying and fasting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that's just awesome that when most people are kind of holding back and doing less, we're like, hey, this is an opportunity for us to do more. Wow. So, guys, I really want us to recommend as well is not just go out and pray, but pray with uh, uh, each other and pray as a movement as yeah. well. And I love how once they focused on pray and praising, that they started to get more faith. Yeah. I love how when both of them, even though both of them were expecting God to do something, but when the, floor, the, when the doors flew open for them to leave, to be honest, most of us, that would be like, that's the miracle we're looking for. That's enough for me. That's good enough for me, God. That's awesome. Wow. They, they stayed. They expected real miracles. They got beaten and thrown into jail and to be let out miraculously was not enough for them. They knew that there needed to be more. 
Sometimes in our lack of faith, we settle for lesser miracles because we weren't expecting much. Well, I had one person come to church. Yes, we have to be grateful. But it's like, wow, are, are, weren't you expecting more from your prayer life? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like this. If I said, hey, would, would anybody here deny $1,000? If I said, I'm going to give you $1,000 today. We would all, I, I'm welcomely going to accept that. But if I told you, hey, you just won the lottery and you only won $1,000. <coughs> there would be a different, like, wait, what? You'd still be grateful for $1,000, but you're like, something went wrong. I was expecting so much more, right? In the same way, your, your prayers need to be like lottery. Don't just accept the little, yes, that's awesome. But they were here like, God, you threw the doors open. I know I can just walk out, but I'm waiting for a bigger miracle, God. Wow. And that's what happens when you get into your prayer. See, I, I wonder if Paul was like, hey, the door is swinging open. That was like worth 10 whips, God. I got beaten and thrown into prison. I need a little bit more. But we got to realize that God wants to give us more. I want us to understand when we start to pray as we go back in our homes is to expect real miracles. Don't think just little things are going to happen in your life. Expect real miracles. Psalms 5, 3 says, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. It says here that we need to be expecting awesome miracles. Yo, know, it's not time to think that you are restricted, but it's now time to think that you have a time to be focused. Very different mindset. And there are so many miracles that are contributed to the power of prayer rather than us just doing something. Yeah. And I think that's what I really love having Jordan here in the church. Come on, Jordan. Jordan had... Him becoming a Christian had nothing to do with this church. Yeah. I really want to, uh, even for me, I'm like, I help Jordan? No, I did not. It was the year that just prayed for him. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, what, what really moved his heart. He may have not noticed that, but that was the power. Yeah. It had nothing to do with us. In the same way, guys, as a church, we have the opportunity to see more miracles than ever. Oh, My challenge for you guys right now is write down one real miracle that you want to see happen in your life or the lives around you. Yeah. And pray for it every day to happen. Come on, John. Point number two, preach to the young. Come on, John. Acts chapter 24, verse 23 through 30, uh, 25. He ordered the centurion to keep Paul under guard, but to give him some freedom and permit his friends to take care of his needs. <coughs> Several days later, Felix came with his wife, uh, Drusilla, and, uh, who was Jewish. He sent for Paul and listened to him as he spoke about his faith in Christ Jesus. As Paul talked about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and said, that's enough for now. You may leave. When I find it convenient, I will send for you. We'll pause there. You know, I think right here, they started to get a little bit more smarter when they started to overlook Paul. You know, they didn't just want him to leave him anymore, you know, under no real guard, um, just to give him time to pray because they remember what happened last time they gave him time to pray. Walls broke up and all these things happened. So like, okay, well, we're going to put him under guard. Yes, we his friends can, can be with him, but we're going to make sure we're in there a little bit more. And uh, some of us can forget what it feels like to be lonely, but we can sometimes look up uh, look forward to being isolated, you know? Like, hey, this is going to be good. I can just be by myself for the next couple of days and everything. Um, and then sometimes we even start thinking like, actually, okay, that's cool. I'm going to be isolated, but I love my roommate. I don't know if I want to spend that much time with them. I love you. Have you ever felt that? I, don't, I love you, but I need my space. Some people can start feeling that, like, hey, if I'm going to be isolated for two weeks, man, we better find something to do. You hang out in the kitchen, I'm in the living room, all these different things. <laughs> and Paul might have been feeling this way a little bit. Have you ever started praying walking down the road, and then when someone walks by you, your prayers just get a little bit more? <laughs> and then you, you walk a little bit further, and then you start praying more, God, you're powerful. God, I love you. But God, like, you know? And I, I wonder if that, that would have been Paul feeling that way. Just as guard just waiting over him, Paul maybe felt like, okay, I can't, I can't pray as much. 
But just because it limited his prayers, it didn't limit his, his preaching. He's like, okay, I can't pray that much. Well, hey, I know God can always listen to me, but you're here now. I I'm going to start speaking the word. I'm going to start sharing my faith. God had a limited, I mean, excuse me, Paul had a limited audience in his captivity, but he did not waste that opportunity. He poured everything into the people that were available to him. He did not hold back. See, the next thing we have is, yes, we're going to have limited time as we're there praying, but yes, there are going to be other people, hey, what are you doing? All right, now it's the opportunity. We need to preach the word of God. We need to have and use every opportunity that we have to start sharing our faith with those around us. Yeah. I know there's always a song that I like. It's actually a bit depressing. But have you ever heard Say Something by a, a Great Big World? Yes. Mm -hmm. Say something, I'm giving oh, up on you. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it is a depressing song. But um, it's a sad song about how if that other person in that relationship would just try and speak up, that other person would say, hey, I would be won over. Like, if you would just say something, no matter what, if you just tried one more time, I, I, I would go with you. It's this reservation that they're like, hey, I want to do it. I want to reach out, but I'm just too scared. I need you to make that first call. And I think about that. I think that can be a lot of people us around us. Where people that we have previously spoken to and written off as I tried, they may be thinking to us, man, if they just share their faith with me one more time, maybe I'll try church again. I'm too scared to reach out to them, but if, if they just showed me another scripture about how God loves me, maybe, maybe, I'll, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll start studying the Bible. We have people around us like that. And they can be anyone. They could be our family, people who have previously been in the church and decided to leave, mm -hmm. previous Bible studies, old friends, new friends that we can meet. If only we would just preach the living word one more time, mm -hmm. they would be willing to give up everything and follow him. We have this opportunity now to preach the word of God. You may think to yourself, okay, well, I tried before. What do I say this time? What should our message be in this time? Well, let's just use the same thing that Paul preached. He preached about righteousness, self-control, the judgment to come. I think other things that people need to hear as well, love, hope, yeah. your community in this time. And to be honest, I think sometimes at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter much, as long as you're just saying something. Because mm -hmm. most of the time right now in this situation, when most people are thinking about themselves, you just calling will be enough. Yeah. I really want to lift up Matt. I know uh, Ian gave me a call yesterday and just kind of gave me an update in his situation. We're definitely playing, praying over <coughs> Ian and Margo and the situation that is right now. But uh, Ian just called me. He's like, hey, man, I'm just encouraged. Matt gave me a call and asked if I needed anything. Oh, come on, Matt. So back. And, and that, that was just awesome. That's all that they need. Mac doesn't really have a car and pick up everything. That's not the point. But it's, it's, it's just that. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have that nowadays. Right. People are, are, are calling their own family or anything and just saying, make sure you get enough for you. Mm. That's, what people are, that's what everybody's advising. Yeah. Instead, now you call and just, hey, what do you need? Is there something I can get for you? Because mm. we need to use this opportunity just to say something. Yeah. And reaching out isn't just limited to the lost. Use this time to encourage the church, uh, the family of churches around the world as well. Maybe this next couple of weeks, if we do get in confinement, I know I'm kind of uh, preparing us, but I don't know if that's really going to happen. I don't want to scare everyone. But maybe this is an awesome opportunity to build friendships around the world. Yeah. You know, we have churches that are not too off on the, the, the time scale right there. You know, build a new friendship in Hong Kong, in Sydney. In uh, the other churches we have. Oh, Apia, there we go. I was like, where else do we have a church? No, we have one. But uh, th this is just an encouragement, guys. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 14, it says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. 
You know, we can be foolishly thinking to ourselves, wow, this is perfect. I can catch up on my sleep now. I can catch up on that TV show I've been meaning to watch. But yet, this is saying it, make the most of every opportunity. I want you to write down one person that you need to say something towards. It doesn't matter exactly what you're going to say, but I just want you to write down one person that you need. I need to reach out to this person one more time. I need to just figure out, pray about it, and just say something to them to give them one more opportunity. Point number three, and coming to a close, prepare for the long game. Acts 28, verse 16. Still coming on, uh, still going along with the, the story of Paul and his confinement. His last one in Rome, it says, When we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself. Okay, that's awesome. With a soldier, soldier to guard him. Okay, so they find out, hey man, if we put him by himself with a friend, okay, he's going to be praying, people are going to hear him, we can't do that. All right, if we put him with some more guards and the, the governor to kind of go in, okay, we can't do that, he's still going to preach the word. So we're going to put him by himself now. With a soldier, we'll guard him. But we're going to make sure he's, he's a little bit distant. Paul, you're by yourself. you got nobody to, to, you can't, nobody's going to hear your prayers, and you got nobody to preach to. Okay, they, they kind of got Paul stuck into a corner right here. But yet, we're going to see that some miracles are still going to happen in his life. Oh, come on. Yes, he was done with all his praying, and he spoke in what he, he, he had to say. No one. But now it's time for a little self-improvement. I love the example we have going on in Italy right now. Um, they are in a dire situation. Keep them in your prayers. Uh, but right now, they are literally limited. They, nobody can go outside of their house. Nobody is allowed outside. But there are some cool videos going around where there's kind of like apartment complexes kind of like this, and they have balconies. And so the neighbors are going out on the balconies and working out together and everything <laughs> and stuff. And so they realize, hey, we can still be community, but hey, this is some time for self-improvement. Wow. And so they have little book clubs going on and all these things out on balconies. Uh, but this thing is just to encourage us to say, hey, it's not, again, just time to sit down and do nothing. It's yeah. time to grow. Come on, John. Here we see Paul was under house arrest in Rome at the end of a long journey as a prisoner. But he did not just fall into a heap of self-pity, oh, man, dire situation. Right. But he experienced expected still spiritual productivity from himself. You know, we see here later on in one of his letters, 2 Timothy 4.13, that he wanted to read something. He wrote, Timothy, when you come, bring my cloak that I left in, in Carpus at uh, Tro Tro Troas, and my scrolls, especially the parchments. See, it was awesome that Paul wasn't just going to expect himself to slowly just sit there and decay. It was time for him to grow. It wasn't time for him just to turn into a vegetable, but deepen his roots right there. Yeah. See, I want to challenge us to grow deeper and uh, dig deeper in the Word of God than we've ever before. Enjoy. See, Paul uses time. Hey, I got a lot of time. I need to start knowing the Word of God. Yeah. See, some of us, again, we could just go into those TV shows, those things, but now start reading the Bible. Maybe set up different challenges for yourself. Read the whole New Testament in a month. Read two books that are targeted, not, not just inside the Bible, but two books that are outside reading that are targeted towards strengthening your weaknesses. Yeah, come on. You know, we have one note that has a, a bazillion uh, lessons on it. Just read one of those a day. You'll learn something. See, I'm pretty sure that Paul, as well, if he had the opportunity, he probably would have asked for his laptop to watch something. You know? Maybe, as well, we have that opportunity. Watch some sermons. Yeah. You know, go, go watch other lessons. Go watch other things about, uh, I know the Bible Project kind of defining a book. is That's always super useful. You know, watch some of those things. Watch a sermon series. And Paul didn't only use his time to read, but he also used his time to write. You know, maybe Paul's imprisonment, he, he needed to kind of get focused because everyone, every time that he was out there, he was just preaching the word. God's like, hey, I'm, I'm going to lock Paul up so he can just write down what he's learned. Wow. Now we have the book of Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, yeah. Philemon, all under, all during the time when he was under house arrest. Wow. You know, God, God turn, tuned out everything else so he can just tune into God's will right there. Mm. Yep, maybe for us, don't sit around, write something. Mm. Write a new praise song. Write a new Bible discussion. Write a sermon. 
You know, I'm not going to be the only one preaching up here. If you wrote an awesome sermon and you're fired up to do it, I'll say, yeah, come up here. Come Galatians away. Chapter, Galatians chapter 3 was kind of hard for me. Maybe you can, you can do it next week. I don't know. See, I, I want to give us a challenge here to really start developing and preparing a plan of growth. Not just sitting around and doing nothing. Maybe have the challenge of have a 30-D plan for yourself. Set up a goals weekly or monthly. Maybe it can be like every Monday. Give me an example. I wrote down every Monday. Maybe you can read 10 chapters of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Skype one Bible study. Call 10 old friends and 10 new friends. You know, um, pray more than you play. If you're doing something that you like, just make sure you kind of have the equivalent there. Tuesdays, read the Gospels chronologically for one hour. Call 10 friends on a different time zone. Write a Bible discussion on Jesus and what you're learning. Pray through the cross. And you can kind of go through each and every day, like actually setting up a time for you growing. Yeah. But the main thing, guys, is, is in here, this is not just a time to get restricted, but to grow more. Mm. And you can do this individually or with others. See, in conclusion, I think we have the opportunity to not just be quarantined, but to really conquer it in our lives. Yeah. Though the world may be shutting down around us, it is just opening up for us. The miracles can just be opening up in the way that we pray and have faith and expect those miracles. Maybe we're having different opportunities open up to us, to us just say one more thing to someone else and preach that word. And maybe it's a, the opportunity opened up to us is to start growing in our relationship with God. And with that, I want to encourage everyone, let's go conquer quarantine. Amen.